Today we're going to do another tutorial and this time we're going to do something different. I was thinking to do a little bit of, um, instead of doing a whole design as we did before, I'm just going to focus on just one element and this time we're going to work on that loop's uh, primary button. Okay, so just want to do some, some, you know, quicker videos for you. And then I was thinking to do like a series of buttons, different games, and then do like maybe some sort of panels or, or um, breaking it down into smaller elements. Okay, let's do this quickly because I really love Dead Loops um, UI. I think it's fantastic. And um, just wanted to share this with you guys. So the button I was working on is basically this button here. So it's very, um, it's kind of complex. So there's a bunch of stuff going on. There's pattern here on, on the two corner here. And there's some half tone effect on the other two sides. And there's uh, another sort of, some sort of pattern on the back here. And there's this kind of like paper uh, tear effect here as well. So I did recreate it and, oh, why is this black and white now? What did I do? Oh, that's interesting. Uh -huh. How did that happen? Do, 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 do. Oh yeah, I changed the mode here from normal to luminosity. Anyway, um, that was weird. So basically the idea here is to recreate this. And uh, I was uh, looking at the design and I ended up basically doing, um, creating a pattern which is basically this one here. And the way to do it, um, so let's just create a new file. Uh, I'll just create something um, not too big, like something like uh, what works for pattern, 10 pixel by 10 pixel, let's say. And then let's zoom in. And then basically, uh, I don't even need this background to be honest. So all I wanna do is just use the rectangle tool and just like pull out like, Let's try five by five pixel. And it's basically just a black fill. There we go. And then we'll save it as, um, go to edit, save it as uh, defined pattern, right? I already have it, I'm not gonna save it. And then I basically, I did another one, which was this orange color. Okay, a color prick from the, from the reference. Again, go define pattern, just do these two patterns and then let's start working on these. Okay, so, okay, I'm going to do another version. I'm not going to just break it. I'm going to create a new one. So what I'm going to do is basically creating this. I'm just going to roughly do the size. Yeah, like that, move it up here and then just use, uh, let's say a black color here, no stroke. All right, this is going to be my base or backdrop, duplicate it, call it pattern, right? Let's remove the field because we don't really need to see that one there, you know? Um, yeah, so I'm just going to remove the field and um, open the layer styles and open the patterns we did. This is basically the one with the orange squares. I use the scale, um, 30%, that worked for me. And all I wanna do, I don't wanna reveal the whole pattern. I wanna hide it actually. And um, the way to do that is basically press the mask and then when the mask selected, command I to invert it. So it's going to hide the whole thing and then use your brush tool, something like a soft round brush and just basically go over the areas you want to reveal it on um like this part here you see you can also use like a, like one of these hard um dry media brush like this one for example but something like soft like like 20 pixels something like that and then just you know just bring in areas um you want to you know just to make it less uniform and just more like rough and I'm gonna do the same on the other side just change the size just bring it in like this and then change it to the other brush you know just like this something like that I like I'm happy with this okay so this would be the base I can 
Oops. There we go. Let's just call it the base. And then we're going to do the middle section here. Okay. So um, I'm gonna do I'm gonna duplicate the base, save some time for myself. There we go. It's gonna be the center. There we go. And then change the color to this orange color. Okay. Um so the the thing is that not all of it revealed. So what we can do is basically just kind of like I selected the, the uh, middle selection of this and then went up to select and transform selection and just kind of like bring in some some side you know bring in the tops bring in the sides like that like that something like that and then just press the mask tool and it will basically mask out the rest but then again we can add back these tiers on the top basically just going and just start painting things in like this you know, like that. Maybe it's too much. Something like that. No, it's too much. And then I'm gonna go up to 100 and just, yeah, like that. And then basically do the opposite on the corner, just remove it. That's too much. Way too much. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, like that. Yeah, something like this works for me. Well, I'm happy with this. Okay, once that's done, um, actually on the bottom as well, just a tiny bit. Let's just build up some stuff here. It's too much. Something like that. Yeah, something. Something like this. That's fine. Okay, so the next one is going to be basically um, the pattern I have here. And that is basically the black pattern I had. So I have to go back and just use the black pattern here, right? And just go like overlay and um, maybe not overlay. I think it was just like screen, not screen, uh, multiply. Yeah, multiply, of course. And then just bring it down, way down. Like, I don't know, like 10 maybe. 10 should work fine. So that's good. It's a little bit, the spacing a bit larger than, than the, the one on the side here. So I'm going to go up to 40, not, not that, sorry, the scaling up to 40, something like that. Yeah. And then we can come back down to five, something really subtle. And I'm not happy with the 40, so I'm going to go back to 30. Yeah, it's much better. Anyway, once that's done, we're going to add these half tone uh, kind of uh, brush strokes in here. And to do that is basically you create a new file. Um, I was experimenting in different ways. And I think the best way to do it is basically just create um, this is actually just it's quite large. It's like almost a thousand pixels, 915 by 919. Very random number. I don't even know how I ended up with this size here. Let's just change it because it bugs me. Uh, change size to like, uh, I don't know, like 900 feels better there we go okay once that's done create a new layer change the color to black and then use a soft round brush okay like that change the size something something large like this oops don't forget to change the opacity to 100 and go like this i'm not happy with that at all uh, and then just go down a tiny bit like that. Yeah, something like this, this is fine. And then once this is done, it has to be basically one layer black and white. This is how the halftone um, effect works. You go up, um, actually going to convert it to smart object so I can modify, I can go back if I, I'm not happy with the settings, okay? Uh, it's not even in the middle. Oh, they're gonna drive me crazy. Anyway, filter. And let's go to uh, pixelate and then color half tone. And my settings are 5, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Press OK and it creates this really cool half tone effect. And, and I created a brush with this. So basically, you can go up to edit and, um, and define brush preset. There we go. And then you can just save this brush. I already did, so I don't have to do that. But the idea is that you create a new layer, which is basically 
uh, just clipped to the below uh, layer. Well, what you have to do is basically hold down Option key between the two layer and just clip it to the to the layer, and that's all what we need to do. Change the color to white, and then with your brush, uh, let's find this brush we made, and then just just basically use two brush strokes, one on the corner here. You see, I'm not happy with that. It's just too fuzzy. So I'm gonna go and change it to like 400 pixel. It's gonna be a lot better. You see, it's much, much, much better. And then you can move it around. You can move it around the way you want it, you know, like that, so over here. And then another one we're going to do, um, let's see, 300, it's a tiny bit smaller. Just somewhere like this here, perfect. I'm happy with that. Um, also, one thing I added to this design is basically a, a drop shadow here. Um, and it's just kind of like gives this really nice 3D kind of stuff. It just kind of makes this element pop a bit more. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah, 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 that's good. Okay. Next thing we do is this, oops, is this uh, kind of like uh, a design element here which you could potentially just uh, literally just mm, create that just like this and change the color to black and then you know it's already clipped because i created between the half tone and the half tone effect and the, the this shape here reduce the opacity to something reduce the opacity to about 10 percent something like that and there you go you you got it there or the other way i did it is basically it's just this this was actually just uh, a gradient where is it uh, uh, uh. Hmm. where did i do it huh Oh yeah, yeah, this is the one here, gradient overlay. Yeah, this was the gradient overlay. I just created this radio gradient overlay, something very sharp. And then, um, you know, you can drag it wherever you want it. So it's basically the same thing, you know. Um, but let's move on to the next one, which is basically um, these, uh, these line works here. And as literally what I done is just start to create I, I added one in the middle basically right there and then we push, reduce opacity for like 20 something like that and change the mode to overlay i think yeah overlay. and then i just basically copied it and uh, increase the size like something like that increase it again And then I was just playing with this basically until I achieved the same similar kind of look. And what I noticed that the more we go outwards, you have to basically increase the size of the stroke. And I was in trouble with that one because the other side is this remains the same, you see. So I ended up basically like having two different folders. So taking all these outer rings, not to worry about the middle one and then put them in the group called right and and literally i just isolated the two sides the left and the right so i add a mask here use the gradient to um gradient here and and then just basically just kind of um must out the left side and just kept the the right and then i did the next one which is left but i inverted the mask which is basically just common eye. And then in here, all of my uh, line work were like two pixel, three pixel, something like that. I was playing with that until I I, 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 achieved, I went out to the other side here. So it's basically moving these, um, uh, scaling them up. And then again, making a new one, scaling them up. Maybe not that much like that. So basically, it's a, it's a lot of adjustment here. You need to worry about, like, yeah. But you can you can 
you know, spend some time on it and you can achieve the same look at the moment. I'm, I'm just going to leave it like that for now. Uh, just place it in that folder called line. Work. And the last thing we have is basically the text, which is I found this font, Avenir Next Condescend, uh, bold italic, 26 pixels should be fine. And then uh, use the color, uh, which is E6D9C9, and just use explore up, down. There we go. Place it in the middle. In the design for them, it's not in the middle, it's not actually centered, which is it's a bit weird. I thought that they basically animated it, and that's why it just kind of, I don't know, but I checked it and it's not, it's not actually animated. Yeah, it's just a small misalignment there. That's no worries. So to make sure to place it in the middle, just hold down command, then click on your layer like this one, and then go back to your move tool and just uh, make sure it's center aligned. There we go. And then we'll just add this. Uh, it looks like a drop shadow, but it's not. It's more like an outer glow. And then when you change it to black, it'll give you this effect. Okay. And um, yeah, we can play with it. We can go down here to about 58. I, I want to go 50. I want to remove the size as well to about six spread. I don't even think we need five. It can go down to zero. And then uh, this should be uh, good for like 50 uh, percent opacity. So uh, I think this is pretty close. Um, I would definitely spend more time on it than just, you know, just wanted to give you an idea how would I would even start building this up. And uh, I love the design. I think it's pretty cool. And the whole design, what they made is just, uh, yeah, it's very impressive. I love it. Um, so this is the end of the video. We did that button and uh, next one, I'm not sure. You can suggest in the comment section what, what, what other buttons would you would like to see. I'm thinking about uh, the Rainbow Six Extraction that has got really cool uh, UI and uh, Valorant, definitely. That's a pretty nice one. Uh, Assassin's, Creed, Assassin's Creed Valhalla um, or all Assassin's Creed games, they are really nice. And this is the end of the video. If you like this kind of stuff, just uh, subscribe and like the video uh, if you liked it, <laughs> because it really helps the channel, you know, and it's good to see that people like what you do. And um, it's really something that inspired me. Okay. Uh, thank you for watching and see you on the next video. Bye.